This is lesson 14.2. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to solve trigonometric equations using inverses. And in this first video, we're going to look at an appropriate domain for using inverses. So to begin with, we're looking at a cosine function here. And this is the, the basic curve for a cosine function. If you remember the definition for function, um, the definition would be for every x, there's exactly one y. And if a thing is a function, it will pass the vertical line test so that as you pass the line across the graph, it only touches in one point at one time. So the cosine function is a function. But if we were to switch x and y to get an inverse to the cosine, the inverse um, ends up looking like this. And if you do the vertical line test on this, you see that it absolutely does not pass the vertical line test because it touches many more places than just one place at one time. So because the inverse to our sine, cosine, and tangent functions are not functions, we have to find a representative part. So since a function must have only one value, every x has only one y value, you define the inverse function for each sine, cosine, and tangent by inverting only the representative part that has the simplest domain values. So I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, we're going to look at the sine function. So here's a piece of a sine function. If we wanted to take only part of this sine function so that when we flip it, switching x and y, then what we have after switching x and y is still a function. The simplest section to choose would be the section from here to here. If we take this section and flip it, um, let's see what that would look like. So our coordinates here would be negative pi halves and negative 1. And in the middle, of course, is 0, 0. At the top, we have positive pi halves and positive 1. So if you switch x with y, um, the x values become y values. And the y values become x values. And so this point here at the bottom becomes um, negative 1, negative half right there. Point at the top becomes positive half or positive 1, positive half. And it's still going to go through the origin. So you get this section. This section of the graph corresponds with the top or the, um, the right side of the curve from negative pi halves to positive pi halves. So the sine function, when you do inverses, it always gives you answers in this region. So now we're looking at the cosine curve. And if we were to take the simplest section of the cosine curve that would make a nice inverse, we would go from this point at the top, which occurs at 0, 1, to this point at the bottom, which occurs at um, pi negative 1. And we also have this point in the middle, which occurs at pi halves 0. So if we invert that, the point at the top, 0, 1, becomes 1, 0. The point in the middle, pi half 0, becomes 0 pi halves. And the point at the bottom becomes negative 1 pi. So the section of the cosine curve that becomes inverted is this section right here. And on the unit circle, that corresponds with the region from from 0 to pi, so that becomes the top half of the curve. Finally, we have the tangent function, and the simplest part of this to invert is going to be just this section right here in the middle. So if we invert the tangent function, the vertical asymptotes become horizontal asymptotes, 
and the curve ends up looking like this. In terms of the unit circle, inverses to tangent functions give answers in the top half of the circle, just like the cosine function. In the next video, you're going to see how to use this information about the inverses.